15th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. via Google Meet. Um, we'll call to order. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. And I want to speak to this right away because it gets to, for me, the heart of it. Um, I think this is a terrible agenda. <laughs> and I, I should know I created it. Um, it's a terrible agenda if we actually want to get something done. Um, uh, that is, get it to the voters by town meeting. Um, this, is, uh, this is an agenda of a longer running committee that'll be working for several months and can really take its time to work through stuff um, uh, and can talk a lot and long, but we have a very short timeline. And uh, if we actually want to get something done, I would uh, suggest a significantly different um, agenda. And, but the question is, do we really want to put some articles of change before the voters? If so, we need to have them no later to the town officers um, by the 15th of January, which means basically we need to be proposing possible changes tonight get them to the lawyers looking at them shortly after Christmas so that the school board can review them by their meeting in January so that then we can get them properly warned by the 15th. That's the way I look at it. So I have a very different agenda to propose if that is what our objective is. If our objective is to really do a thorough study of this, then we can follow this agenda and we can work our way through and maybe get to something tonight, but I, I, I think we've got to work a little more disciplined and a little faster, personally. So I agree. Um, I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, Charity, what do you think? Um, you know, my personal opinion is, um, you know, Tim made a comment at a meeting a couple months ago that articles can be amended, and it set off a red flag in my head that we need to do this ASAP. We need to put this in front of the voters at this next town meeting because we need to start showing them that there's an increased level of transparency. There's an increased effort of really, truly, honestly diving to the bottom of the barrel and getting things done that are going to fix some of the misconceptions, misunderstandings. Um, I say this with a grain of salt, deceitful interpretations of what was presented three and a half, four years ago. Um, and what has come to fruition now. Um, if we don't do that, you're losing your one and only shot of any effort to really show the voters on the Stockbridge side who, let's face it, that's the side that has voiced much more of a disdain towards the situation we're in right now. Um, and if, you, if we don't make this move right now and get that in front of them, you've lost mm -hmm. your shot because they're gonna take other routes to rectify this situation. Um, you've been present at the select board meetings. Um, Stockbridge has made the, the, what it was necessary to get it on the town meeting docket to vote on whether Stockbridge wants to stay in the merge or not. So if you want to make an effort to, for lack of a better way to say it, you know, go apple to apple at, making something effective happen, we've got to do it now. Does that mean we do a half-hearted effort on this? No, we need to dive into each one of these, figure out what the core is, get it fixed. Was it done in conjunction, were these articles built in conjunction with what was presented at all of those 706 meetings? Um, was it not? Where were the misconceptions? How do we start rectifying this situation? You know, I'm going to be the first to admit I was not in favor of the merger. I've not been, you know, dishonest about that. I've been straightforward about that from the beginning. Um, but I think this exercise, along with the situation with the high school building, they're crucial parts of trying to get this to a more equal and possibly long term sustainable situation. If we don't do it, we've lost a large amount of hope of getting that to a successful, successful, sustainable situation. Good. I, I'm in line with Charity, and I also feel like the folks who- um, Can you turn down your volume a little bit? 
I think it's it's refeedbacking back. I can't actually hear you very well. Um, I'm. Is that better? Maybe. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Um, I'm hopeful that the folks that are involved in the meeting tonight are going to uh, bring to light the hot spots that we. Oh, hold on, a second. Ray's got a. Ethan, sorry. Justine is echoing on charity. Charity, could you mute? Yep. Hold on a second. Wow. We'll figure out how to do it. That's great. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm hopeful that the folks that are involved in the meeting tonight can help us uh, figure out where to zero in tonight specifically and the changes that need to be made. I agree that um, now's the time and 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 uh, it now's the time to have these voices heard. Today's the day. So I think we should move forward assuming that we are going to propose changes as soon as possible and get going with a, a new agenda that is more effective. Tim. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for getting this together. I know it's only been a couple months, but for what we're going to do, but it's been going on now for three, four years, even before the merge started. Um, I do agree that it needs to be done quickly, but very accurately. They did it quickly the first time, and I'm not so sure it was that accurate. I certainly, after looking back at the articles that were presented uh, to the board, the BOE, uh, and watching the video that was proposed, I, I do find some issues with that. And, you know, they put it together in six weeks. And at the BOE's uh, proposal, uh, Bruce made it pretty clear that um, he was going to get some things started. And from what I've been able to see, those were never started or finished. So I would be very interested in hearing what people have to say tonight. And mm -hmm. before we even make a, a, the presentation that we, we want, you want that, because the thing is, you have to go back to the RSUD board and they have a tendency to kick a can down the road. So if you want to have this on this year's, town municipal meeting, I don't think that's going to be possible at uh, all. And I would suggest that we get it figured out for the RSUD uh, town meeting. Thanks. All right. Well, then, uh, that, that sounds like pretty clear. What, what my idea is, is to change it and to literally put our public comment first. So we sort of hear and we write down the list. Um, I'd say, uh, I think we should work from the hot spots to the agenda articles of agreement. That way we can, we can put a lot of things aside that, you know, that are not the hot spots. Um, or we can just, cause here's the thing. I don't, you know, it's very clear from those emails from Donna that uh, Russo Savage that, um, you know, we have to warn every single change. And so I think I think what's really concrete and doable is like one, two, three really key changes. And that's that our sort of our job is to figure out what those are. Um, I think your thing about a uh, charity you mentioned to me once before the, the um, voting representation, each town votes for their own representation, you know, res representation. And that's why I asked that question of her. I think that's a great one. I'd like to hear what the other ones are, and then our job will be to whittle those down to what we think are the real key ones. And here's the thing, this is what, this is our job, is that we present, um, I, think, I think the RSA board, which I'm now the you know, chairman of, I think, they'll, I think they could act very clearly if we give them yes or no articles. If we give them articles that are like, yes, no, yes, no, to vote on then I think we can get right through, get right through that process and we can do it. I think, I think we can do it, um, but I think we have to be disciplined and we have to be careful of um, going down the rabbit holes of you know, perceptions that have happened before. And I think we need to really stick with the document, you know, that legal document that we voted on because that's what I'm getting, the advice I'm getting is that that's the article that we change. Not what was said here or said there, it's the articles themselves because that's what we voted on. So if, if to go with this, I would start with public comment. 
and then I would I would make a go for our first work would be the hot spots, you know what are the hot spots and and talk about those maybe prioritize them, then I would go to the um, then I'd go back to the agreement and look at each one of where those um, hot spots are mentioned in the agreement and look at the exact language and see what we um, what we feel obviously all this is going to have to also get checked by lawyers after we come up with it whatever um, um, uh, whatever suggestions we have have to get obviously the constitutional thing about representation on voting that particular one in, in, in particular okay um, so that would be the first thing then after agenda agreements um, is there as I, I, mean, I think we've already sort of set a timeline but we can we can get into hot spots Let's do public comment and then a timeline, just so we're clear, so it's written down. Then we'll talk about these hotspots we heard about and the ones we know, and then let's go to the agreement. And then I think the, a very important thing is um, let's figure out what we're going to report to the board and what we need more information on. I don't think we need much more than that. I think that covers what we're going to, you know, we're going to get the conversation we want in those four items. Ethan, do you intend on, uh, when you mentioned going through what what is and isn't a hotspot um, article, um, I think it would be beneficial if we just, as we go through the articles that were the warned and ratified ones, mm -hmm. uh, as Donna had mentioned in her emails, there are some that they literally were they pertained to day one yeah. and she made it very clear that there is a huge benefit in leaving those alone yeah. um and i think we need to just signify this is one that's done like number one is done yep. and any that are done just label them done any that are ones we need to address circle them yep. then go back through those figure out what are hot spots and um and then, as you said, go on to the agreement and look at it, because um, I did an exercise last night. And if you look at what was the ratified articles and you compare those to the articles that were part of the document that she had sent to you and that was sent to us, they are not the same. There are 13 articles in the presentation. There are only 11 articles in the ratified warned articles. So there are there are differences and and unfortunately those do not coincide with what was presented on the video to the BOE. So I, uh, yeah. I think there are pieces that we may have to create or add in language to get those pieces to line up with what was more originally intended. Okay. No, I hear you. I'm open to, I'm open to that. I think you know if we voted on an 11 article agreement that is our base i think we could get you know into a lot of confusion trying to figure out what's our base and i think we have to set a base right away and that way we know where we're working from i say you know if, if what we voted on was 11 articles that's the one we work from and we work from the language there um good so then i would put this um up to uh, uh public comment Right now, I mean, well, let's first. Uh, do we agree to these changes to the agenda? Can everyone just? Uh, I do. You, you do, Justine. Yes, I agree. Okay, good. So we're going to go public comment, ho uh, timeline, hot spots, uh, agreements. You know, going back to the agreement, and then uh, what we're going to report to the board. Good. All right, I'm going to go to our list, and let's. Uh, work down and I know listeners you may not you may you thought you were going to get to sit around and listen for a while but we're actually going to get to you right now um, and I'm going to start with Joanne okay can you hear me yes I can thank you okay good um, I and, like if I may jo sorry Joanne yes. if I may um, this is our question to you is what do you what specific issues are your priority hot spots with the agreement I am going to um, tell you that I trust this group of four people that they've read them, they've um, rehearsed them, they've written them out, and I don't want to waste your time uh, tonight because I want you to get to work, and I hope that the rest of the people in the community feel the same way, 
and that they don't ask too many questions or make too many comments because I think you need this time to work. But I do appreciate the fact you asked. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Joanne. Karen, you're Karen Rubin. You're up next. Um, hello, everyone. I first want to say thank each and every one of you guys for taking on this task because it is a huge task and it is critically important to the, the merger and its future. Um, you know, my hot spot is the equal rep the appropriate representation, and you guys know that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I think Stockbridge people should be able to have their votes counted accordingly, and Rochester as well. Um, the rest of it, I'm going to let you guys take from here. And obviously, this is going to have to be voted on. So oh, yeah. we'll we'll have that voice later. So good luck and thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat Harvey, do you have any comments? I'm just sitting here all ears. Get to work. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I'm going to the phone numbers. Uh, Eric, I'll give you the area code and the last two digits and it's star six. Is that right, Ray? Two on mute. Uh, Erico 443 and then last two digits 15. Please state your name and your town. This is Rob Gardner from Rochester. Hi, Rob. How are you? Uh, Good. I, uh, I'm just, I think I'd be um, very interested in listening to this. I really don't understand the entire framework of it because we're talking about this thing that happened three years ago and then the articles of agreement. I also would be a little concerned that this is entirely Stockbridge centric in the level of concern. Uh, and, um, and I don't blame them, God bless them, but uh, we need to remember that the merger includes both communities and that's the end of my presentation, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 516 and in 61. Do you have Hello a everyone, it's, uh, Keith, it's Keith Spilecki from Stockbridge. Hi, um, hi, I'm going to reserve my comments. I'd like to wait to hear what the um, the board puts forward, and I'll make my comments at that point. So uh, thanks all, and that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Keith. 77459. Please identify yourself, star six to unmute. If you have a comment, I'll take it not hearing from you. Uh, come in before I finish. 802, uh, last two digits, not one nine. Please identify yourself and town. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, this is Greg Piccarello, Stockbridge. Uh, don't comment at this point. I'm just listening to see what's going on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, 802.71. 802.71, do you have a comment on the hotspot issue? No, okay. Well, not as, not as much as I expected, but... Uh, That'll be our public comment for right now. Um, let's let's pull the board, the, our our committee here. Um, this obviously representation um, is one that's been mentioned to me before. Um, Charity, do you have other hot spots? Do you think jump out at? Charity, you're muted. So was I. That's why I couldn't I, tell you. <laughs> whoops. Sorry. Um, yes, that is definitely one of the hot spots. Um, let me flip to. I actually went through and looked at these. So I apologize because I wasn't ready for this to happen yet. Um, so the first one that I have as a an item to discuss is Article 4A 
Um, that discusses the first year financial activity. Um, or no, I'm sorry, 4A is in regards to being able to rearrange the grade arrangement. And I think we need to discuss that because there's a lot of there's a lot of conversation that's happened about it in the last couple of years. A lot of it is rumor, but I think we may want to discuss, do we want to look at that one and make it so that there would be more conversation from public input about any type of arrangement of kids changing grades to what buildings because of spacing um, and not just have it be at the will of the board itself. Um, so 4A is one of them. Um, 4D is in David is the one that I was talking about. Um, this has to do with uh, the um, proposed budget. Um, my concern with this one is that Stockbridge historically has not voted in a budget that was over the threshold or anywhere close to it. And I think we need to consider re-looking at this language um, because of that. I think we need to set a standard that we're not going to do that. And I don't know how most effectively to do that and what our limits are, because I know that the SU has input in that. And But I do think we need to look at this one um, just because I know that that's a huge selling point for many people in Stockbridge because of their historical choice to not allow a budget that's over the threshold. Um, so moving on, the next one that I see is um, an issue, not necessarily a hot spot, but a concern was 5B as in boy. Um, I have listed here, uh, need to make sure, uh, because as Tim mentioned on a couple things, there were pieces that were put into articles and the presentation that were put in, but I don't know that they have or have not actually been set in motion. And this is one that I highlighted as we need to follow up on. Um, if I and again, can you get, sorry, Charity, can you just give that one a title? Um, is um, it surplus or? Operating surplus and deficits forming this. Uh, this one is has to do with operating surpluses. Operating surpluses. Okay, thank and, you. Just just to give it a title. Yeah, and I'm going to assume. What? Go ahead. Uh, I um I just want to make sure where where I thought we were going over what was actually warned and voted on. So are we going? We're we're da is that correct that we're going over the other document, not what was actually the warning, which is longer. We're going over the longer one because the shorter one doesn't have 5B. Oh, yeah. Or 4D. Right. It doesn't have 4D. It doesn't have a lot. So I don't know. I think it's that's, worth it. So that's my concern is there are pieces that were left out. So well, how do we, and I think we do need to look into this. I think so, I think we may make it clear too that that according to again Donna Russo Savage, the one we voted on I believe she said this in her email and I, I'll look it up again, the one we voted on is the one we should be working with. So okay. if that's the eleven article, then that's the one we should be um, taking some fr taking our points from. Okay, so we'll leave we'll forget about D because it's not there. Uh, you mean 5B? Is that 5B? No, 4D no. is 4 not in there. the warned article. Got you. Thank you. So 5B is still an option, and that's the it option. Is. Yes, and it's about surplus. It's the same. Yep. Yep. And then again, 5D. Those are ones that I just don't know if like the public has had the ability to know. I'm assuming that they have, that they have been done because they were related around finance issues, and Tara has, you know, done a pretty phenomenal job of getting all of that back in order, but mm -hmm. I don't know for sure myself. This, um, this is going to be very much part of our report back to the board is that we we have, you know, suggestions for amendments and then we have questions that need to be clarified to for the public. And that can be two different parts of our report back to the board. Yeah. Um, so 5D, moving on. Do you, have a title, do you have a title for 5D? For 5D is, 
Uh, it has to do with specific endowments, scholarships and endowments. And is there a question? Are they, uh, are they, have they been done? Have they been worked out? Is that have, yeah, have they been allocated as expected based on the endowment or scholarship itself? I'm assuming yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so the next one, I'm just trying to correlate to make sure that what I've got on one page matches the ratified ones. Um, so the next one I have is 6A. And this has to do with like all buildings and um, the stuff in it. There's language in the high school, the sale of the high school building about what's in it and what is wanted and what's not. But I think we need to be careful because of what's the language that's in this particular article. Mm -hmm. um, it just came up as a red flag to me because there is language about, you know, the stuff that's in the building for the sale of the high school. And then there's language about stuff in this article. I don't know if there's any issue. It just, like I said, it set up a red flag. Right. Um, it's tough and, and uh, Article 6A, okay, uh, as relates to um, contents. That's the word I'm looking for, contents of building. Yep. Okay. This is great work. Thank you so much for, for really doing this. This is excellent. Um, and so then we move on to seven. Seven is obviously a humongous hotspot. I don't think I need to say any more about that. Board composition, yes. That's the um, number eight. I don't know that I personally have ever seen a docket of who was voted on for board members with a one, two, or three year term. And that might be something that we can get out to the public to clarify and make sure that those terms were set up correctly and who holds what term. Got you. And when it expires. Exactly, yes. The term, uh, 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 yeah, length and expiration. This is great. I mean, a lot of this is it's already done in some ways. You know, we just have to ask the question. Right. Um, and then number 11, uh, I think, so number 11 is the last one on the ratified articles, and it goes hand in hand with number seven. It has to do with the way that uh, board members are voted in, and I, ironically, we are the only district that wrote our articles this way. Uh, everyone else covered it in a single article. Um, but 11 needs to be looked at because it does go hand in hand with, uh, sorry, 11 needs to be looked at hand in hand with seven. Okay. Um, and to that note, I do have a document that shows what each of the other districts in the SU did. And we, in fact, I believe are the only one that is not having single voting from its town only on its town's representation. Wow. wow. Everyone else is, you know, Chelsea votes for Chelsea only, Tunbridge votes for Tunbridge only. Uh, same with Hancock and Granville, uh, all of them. This sounds like a no brainer. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it also sounds like such a clean, clear article to vote on in some ways, you know. So, anyway, that's, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, let me move on. Is that charity? Is that all you have for? I mean, all it's wonderful. Um, is that what you've got for us? Yes. If we're sticking to the the plan of going through the eleven that were ratified, yes. Good. Um, let me move on. Justine, what do you have for us? Charity pretty much hit all the hotspots, number seven, obviously, and in conjunction with 11. I thought the same, that they should be kind of reviewed together and combined because they are. it's confusing, I think, to have both seven and 11 be separate, even separate in, in, with space in between. I mean, maybe they should be seven and eight. Or seven um, A and seven B or, or something. something like that. But obviously the representation and the, and the vote is, is a big issue. Um, some of the wording that I'm still trying to work through um, 6C, um, that the unified district of board of directors determines in its discretion that continued possession of the real property um, is, is, is no longer of use. I think that um, 
that's kind of a, an issue for me. I wanted to bring up and, and maybe throw, throw around um, who really decides whether the property is useful um, and how to word that in a way that um, represents the town, you know, the town's opinion and what might be useful for the school. Um, let's see. Okay. And yeah, reiterating 6A along with that, it, it does say that um, that it includes all land buildings and contents. I think 6A really needs to be reworded and worked through um, in comparison to what we're actually working toward with the sale. But seven is the heavy hitter for me. Okay. Yep. Good. Tim, do you have anything to add to this? Tim, are you there? Well, not necessarily about the articles, but how we got there and what we voted on and what was presented to the BOE. I understand that we have the, the articles that we voted on, but we did not hear the presentation to the BOE. So, Tim, could you possibly be back from your camera a little more just so I can see your face? Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm Good. on my Appreciate smartphone. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. So uh, the, the oh, present- Now I can just see the ceiling. The pr presentation. Um. Can you hear me? Yes. To the BOE does follow the articles of agreement. So part of the articles that the BOE heard are not necessary. They didn't go over each one of them. And there are, there's some confusion about people that were sitting at the meetings, hearing what was presented, and then the articles that were written and uh, right in the presentation, it was obvious that there was going to be discussion early on, six months down the road. And do you have now, specific? Do you have specific issues that that, that were well, mentioned? Well, yeah. So, so the BOEs presented with they're going to we're going to share teachers, we're going to mix grades, uh, going to combine weekly uh, classes outdoor, you know, share the two buildings. Oftentimes it was discussed that there was only two buildings that were going to be used high school, uh, in one in each town. And then later on somewhere down the road in that presentation, all of a sudden the high school gets involved. And uh, I'm pretty sure that it was switched over in the conversation because the consultant saw that the BOE was not really on to merge at the time. So uh, the, actually one board member voted no. So um, the, what also isn't discussed here lately is the BOE always comments on how Rochester was going to fare in this. And they also said right on the back of their napkin, they anticipated 25 to 30,000 bucks. For, if, 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 what was that? They anticipate, what was that anticipated? That, that the per person, if they didn't close the high school, was going to be 25 to $30,000. And that was three years ago. So um, now we're taking a school that's been responsible that was at $16,000 per student for elementary and their seven through 12 were being shipped out for tuitioned out for let's say 17,000 bucks. Ours are being shipped out, tuitioned out for eighteen thousand dollars now but at the time we were educating for between twenty five and thirty thousand dollars which was taking away from an elementary school mm -hmm. to keep that high school open so we we did that part but what we never discussed was what happens to rochester if stockbridge gets out of the merge so if it so it is a Rochester issue, but it can be fixed pretty easily and not very complicated by uh, 
Rochester taking possession of that high school. And even if Rochester has to spend money. To when you say Rochester, are you talking Rochester campus? Ro Rochester, Rochester town. town. Yeah, just we need to be clear whenever we talk about that, that we that we talk about Rochester town or the you know select board town Rochester as opposed to the campus of Rochester. Well, uh, that <laughs> Ethan, that was discussed before we even merged, and all of a sudden it disappeared. So um, the other thing that was never discussed at the BOE proposal was the daycare building. The daycare building was a big issue during the whole merge. And why that wasn't presented, because we hadn't even voted on it yet, why that wasn't presented to the BOE is, I, I don't think, People wanted them to know that that building was still in play at the time. Uh, and it hadn't even really been discussed to sell it until Patty got involved. So, um, or we would still have the daycare on the plate. So, well, here's the, here's the thing. So let, I just want to make sure I'm clear with you. What going forward, what, what's the specific you want to hear about? What's the well, specific we need to address? So the thing is, that was October 2017. The budget's being put in place in January of 2018, started for this merge. No money was ever in the transportation budget to do the cross transportation between the two schools. So there was no way that that proposal that they sold to the BOE could- Oh, so this is going- that. This is going back to share teachers, mixed grades, weekly classes, two building, that that part. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So in um, other words, so they presented one thing to the BOE and yet there was no money in the budget for cross exactly, back and forth. That's exactly right. Okay, so are you suggesting that there needs, I mean, because I believe in the last budget, we did have some money, but maybe that was just for, I mean, I'd have to look at the budget. Yeah. So, so, so this is what you're suggesting is that we need um, some acknowledgement that either we're not doing this or that where's that where's that budgeted. That's exactly right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to get at is just what what are we bringing to the board meeting that needs to be clarified by you know maybe SU people maybe our administrators. Um, so that we understand this. Okay, let me figure out how to write that out. Well, we can Ethan, talk about can I, yeah. I, I think a piece that you need to add about that um, is that, you know, as a parent who had a kid involved in the, the, the couple of multi, uh, shared campus activities that happened, mm -hmm. um, you, we, it may be highly beneficial to get input from Lindy and Bonnie on that and see what was realistically feasible because as a parent, I was absolutely disgusted by the way the shared campus activities happened. Um, at the time I had a fifth grader and then a second year, a sixth grader who literally could not do any academic activities for any of the rehearsal days. And we as parents found out the night before that, oh, by the way, your child isn't gonna be getting done school until six o'clock at night and you have to pick them up in Rochester. Um, so for my kid to lose an entire half a day of academics and then come home and tell me that she literally sat around silent reading for all but 30 minutes of the entire afternoon from yeah. one o'clock till six o'clock, that's ridiculous. What, so, when, when, what year was this? So my daughter is a seventh grader right now. So this would have been last school year and the previous school year. So I'm not saying that it can't work. Yep. I think we need to look at how do we, if we're gonna really consider it and have performances in the gymnasium, which I'll be, I'll be very blunt. The, the performance in the auditorium was a horrible travesty. It was atrocious. Um, it, it was a nightmare, in my opinion. The, yeah. the presentation in the gymnasium was much more fluid. It seemed much more uh, feasible for teachers, staff, students, and family was that to the, all be present. Was that the music 
presentation in the gym? It was, it was band, chorus, and um, a bunch of different things, but yes, musically um, yeah. elemented. Um, so in other words, it, yeah, that was the thing that's, um, 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 Figuris, Mallory. Yes. Yes, okay, good. So I'm not saying that those things can't happen. I'm saying that I think we need to seriously go back to the drawing board and find a way for it to be presented to everyone on both sides that you know if you can fit 40 kids into the gymnasium to practice and we as a school in Stockbridge have fit more than that in the multi-purpose room to practice mm -hmm. there's got to be more give and take you can't always have the Stockbridge students getting on a bus and going and spending five hours at Rochester and it, so there's got to be more planning and I don't I know that the article itself can handle that, but we need to get it out there um, that it's an it's an issue that needs to be re-looked at um, before we just start is, doing it. If I may, I think, I think the term is, and we've come up with this a couple of times, and it's certainly something I've been working very hard on, this idea of um, equity, um, this I, and, and it's equity in the sense of consideration. And I think yeah. this, this is something like, and maybe there's an article that gets added that's about all decisions made for one campus need to be considered in the results in the other campus. You know, it's like, or, or something to that extent that we're always thinking of both places with every decision. And I know some of the people with the financial issues, it's like, oh, well, Rochester just spent this on this because they went ahead without thinking about the effect on Stockbridge. And I think, um, this idea of equity might be something and you know if we can get to it great and that we can come up with a phrase but maybe it's an article we even add actually there is language in the existing articles about that i think we need to just possibly revamp it mm -hmm. um and make it more prominent um don't quote that's, me on where it is but there is a thing about there I've seen about that. i've seen that, um, that too yeah and then one last thing to add to Tim's, I know we don't want to add a ton in about the BOE at this point, but you know, one other big, really huge discussion item from the study phase of it before it went to the BOE was that there was a humongous push and there were multiple meetings and conversations. And I will be the first to admit they were not pleasant meetings to attend. And yes, I was there. Um, you know, Bruce Labs, Dale Dame, uh, or I think that's it, Steve Dale. Steve Dale, I think, was his name. Um, and then a lot of other people kept talking about and promising that Rochester was going to go to a multi-age classroom platform just like Stockbridge, and that they were going and um, shadowing at Williamstown, and that the intention was a $300,000 reduction in staffing expenses because of going to that. And to the best of my knowledge, when the articles were written, that just disappeared. The Tell entire, the entire conversation disappeared. Tell me, describe that again. I, I'm not sure I'm following you, what, what you mean about multi-age classroom. So Stockbridge has shared classrooms yeah. where we have more than one age group in a classroom. We don't have just first grade, just second grade, and so on. And as one of the conditions that was repeatedly discussed at length was that Rochester was gonna go to that same type of platform. There were efforts being made that they were going and Stockbridge staff, I believe was as well, were going to Williamstown. Don't quote me that that's the school that it was, but it was a larger school that was going to a multi-classroom platform because it can adapt to a multitude of needs. It can affect, it can change the, um, how you would deal with uh, special education needs of say a fifth grader that actually is doing something at a third grade level and, or a third grade level that third grader that's reading up at a sixth grade level. Those multi-age classrooms have, they have a multitude of benefits. And so, as yeah. one of the huge discussion items that was repeatedly mentioned, and like I said, it was very heated conversations, mm -hmm. was that 
one of the selling points of the merger was that there was going to be a change at Rochester and it was going to produce a $300,000 reduction in costs of staffing by going to this platform. Okay. The article right. got built. There's no okay. mention of it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, it, okay. It's just a point that mm -hmm. I don't know where they went. Yep. No, I, I got you. Um, Let's just, I'm sort of, uh, you know, again, still working on this list of our hotspots, but I think um, uh, good. Okay. I, I understand what you're talking about now. Shared classroom was promised for Rochester and is never for Rochester and never come through. Um, good. Um, all right. Um, so I think we've worked through, um, let me, I'm going to rewrite this just so we have a sense. Um, and then we can go through article four, a, um, and then article five B. And D. 6A and I'm going to lump 7 and 11 together and 8 and then I'm going to say um, hey, Can I add 6C in there just to review the wording of um, who determines uh, whether the, a building is useful? Thank you. Yep, I didn't look at your list. Thank you. Uh, 6C. Good. Thank you. All right, and then we have Tim promised, um, I'm gonna call this, uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. how do we wanna title this? I have a, I have a question about um, how much we can review the, the previous promises um, and add additional things into this, um, what we've voted on, because a lot of the stuff that we're talking about wasn't actually voted on, it was just kind of essentially just talk yeah but, but, but here's the thing we couldn't have done it without the boe approving it so what was given to the boe needs to be what was on the articles of agreement and i'm not sure that's what happened no well, it wasn't actually i disagree with that well, 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 please 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 okay i need to this is where i need to be my chairman here um we need to we need to speak one at a time and yeah, raise hands just like they do at Stockbridge. Um, uh, uh, Tim finished and let's go to Justine. Can you finish your- A lot of things were not included in the in the articles that were voted on and I am unsure- you mean, Voted on or discussed? Voted on. The, the articles that the draft articles is more extensive are more extensive than what were voted on. The presentation to the BOE was much more extensive than that and did include a lot of things that Tim listed. My question is legally, how much of that can we talk about and include in an amendment to what was voted on? Well, we, if I may, Charity, and I'll just get to you. Here's just to keep us focused. I think what we're going to do with these articles is we're going to we're going to sit with these hot spots as we're calling them or hot topics whatever I don't know what I call them hot spots. Um, uh, we're going to divvy them up as potential amendment or clar clarification question, and then we go forward so that then we know this is just something that needs to be addressed because it was out there and nobody has spoken to it since. That's a question that just needs to be out there on the record, an answer from the powers that be. And we may also have to decide who's going to answer this question because it's me, it's you, you know, I mean, it's um, there might not be, you know, um, Bruce is not here anymore. Jamie might have no idea. Um, but anyway, I think on the record that that's a question. Then there's a different issue of, of what is going to be an amendment. And I think it'll be pretty clear to us pretty quickly what's, what are the real priority amendments and what are things that we just need? We want on the record an answer to, okay? Charity, please, after that. Um, so 
I agree and I disagree with you on that. Um, okay. it, I agree that there are pieces of the puzzle that we need to get an amendment in to clarify or you know to more accurately align the article. But if you go back through the emails from Donna Russo Savage, there's clear language in there that we can add, remove, do whatever we want. Um, there's there's language in her emails to you that we are capable of coming up with an entirely new set of articles if that is what we so choose. So to answer Justine's question, if we get clarification on you know uh, whatever question and we get definitive information that yes, this was a piece of the puzzle that was discussed at length, it was meant as a promise and we want to add in an article, then there is nothing to prevent us from my understanding of her explanation oh, yeah. um, that we could add a new article. What she did say, and I would strongly suggest we listen to this piece, is that anything that we did, I would rather see us write an article that states that a previous article is nullified if we're going to completely remove it so that we keep the historical record of that original article versus just removing it and starting over. I think there's huge value in keeping original documentation so that you can see what your mistakes are so that if five years from now, there's a question of, hey, we need to reevaluate an article because of a change in a state law, we can see all of what was originally done and not have to go back to the town clerk or whoever it is to get all the various copies. Um, I'd rather see us keep it all in one article or one document that, you know, if we have article 21 is now going to become nullified, let's write that in. But I don't think we should just get rid of or, you know, admonish any one piece. Well, again, what I, again what I want to um, emphasize is that, you know, we've got now, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, either clarifications or possible amendments. Um, I, I think realistically to get amendments, all of these as amendments done tonight to the lawyers back to the school board and worn by the 15th, Jan January 15th is unrealistic. So I think we're going to have to prioritize. Now, that doesn't mean this committee is done once we've done a report in January. That doesn't mean we don't take on these other articles, especially once we've gotten some feedback of, as to whether some of these things are still happening or not, you know, or still are, are, are considered part of the policy. Then we can, I mean, you know, we, we can always warn a special election you know, to make things happen. It's a lot more cumbersome and it's a big thing. But if we have a full slate of changes for the agreement eventually, because I don't think we'll make that by town meeting, um, then that's what we do. You know, that's what we do. But I'm saying if, you know, it, like for example, it seems to me that a really good one to have right now for, um, for the town meeting is the representation one, especially if there's a precedent for it in all the other um, districts. Um, that's a that's a clean, nice one. We and then we get answers to all of these. Um, and I'm not trying to push us this way because this will obviously be something we vote on. But I'm just saying some of these other ones sounds like we're going to have to talk about it at length longer than that. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying taking anything off the thing. You know, we could redo the entire articles agreement. Yes, I heard that. I read that too. And we sh and we should continue that process till we feel good about it. But in terms of what trying to what we're trying to get done by January fifteenth, we may have to prioritize. Does that make sense, Charity? Yeah, sorry, I was trying not to hang up instead of unmute. Yeah, um, yeah I think if we want to take that approach, my only request would be that we make a very clear delineation so that there's clear transparency to the public that are involved in listening to us with this that. It, X are the ones that we are going to attack for for this year so that we know we get them on the town meeting vote and that here is our game plan with an expectation of when we will approach the next ones. Um, because as I said before, you've got Stockbridge who's already taken some action towards other efforts 
and you've got the sale of the high school going. I don't want this well, to just get left to the wayside. Well, here's 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 I'd say then let's 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 add this to our timeline is um we've got the school board meeting in May. I mean the school meeting um is is I believe is early May. So we've got the town meeting um March, early March, and we get one thing on there. Let's make that our you know, our next our next um, spot that we're working toward so that we have a clear delineation that that's when we want, you know, and maybe we even prioritize this one's really important to us. This one should be, you can't do it this time, but let's, let's shoot it for May. So that's our timeline so that we know there's a time when we're going to get together, you know, we're working toward. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Okay, great. Um, I just Justine's wanna... got her hand up. Oh yeah, sorry, Justine. I can't see it. It's so off the screen. I can barely see it. Oh, it is. I can yeah, see sometimes put it in front of your face. Even that, that helps. Yeah, there um, you go. I just wanted to. Um, I just wanted to say that I personally, I was following the an interpretation of Attorney Savage's emails, and that we were focusing only on this document that was voted on. I did read the others, but I wasn't thinking about. Um, really ripping them apart or even reviewing the Board of Education stuff from the past. And I foresee that now that we've brought this up as a topic to the public, there will be more comment and questions on the things that were proposed. I admittedly, admittedly was misinformed prior to that vote. It's part of the reason why I wanted to be on the school board because I, um, I do know that there were things that were confusing. And I think that um, the, the, that all the other stuff is a much bigger task. And I propose that we focus on just what was voted on first as our hot spots, and then look for a, a longer timeline for the other issues that, that were presented prior to the vote. Good. Okay. Um, let's, um, I just, um, I just want to make sure I have my um, names here, rearrange grade arrangement. Uh, should we, operating deficit, should we go to 7-Eleven first while we're fresher? And this, I mean, this just seems like such a- Sure, yeah, let's do that one, it's an easy one. Great, great, um, let's, let's do it. Let's take a look at that. Um, Ray, if you're still on, if you could put that up for us in seven. Oh, yeah. And actually, Charity, why don't you share, if you can, share with us what, what you said you had some examples. Do you want me to send out to all of us by email the document I was sent? Yeah, sure. I mean, if, if you can itemize it even more, you know, if you can get to the article or something like that, whatever, whatever makes it just easier. It's actually, it's actually one document that is an exact excerpt, ex, excerpt of what is in the articles for the other districts. Okay. So let me, yeah, give, me give me two seconds. Okay. I'm going to mute again. We so can, you don't we can just look, uh, yeah, if we can um, get an article. But seven, Ethan, right. what you're looking at right there is not the voted on warned. Oh, it is. Okay, then that's it's further right. that's down. Right. Um, Ray, can you go, go down a little farther, please? Oh, sorry, Ray, yes. <laughs> I thought Ethan was sharing it, but... No. Keep scrolling down, please. Um, uh, all the way down. Do we have a page number here? I don't have... Um... I think it's page 22, 23. 22 through 26. 23. Uh, attachments. I, he may have... Um, Oh, yeah. It's page 23 is the start of the 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 ratified version. It's but after attachment D. Can you send, send me the 11? Can you, you know what? Or send Ray. Can you send Ray the 11 article thing we voted on? Because I'm I, I, he showed me one this morning, and I wasn't savvy enough. And he asked if this was the one we should be looking at. And I think oh. I gave Okay, um, mine is at the end of of the document. It's at the very end, the last page is. Yeah, so yes, this, pages twenty three uh, through twenty six. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. Yep, the top, the beginning of that section, which. Uh, would, okay. Yep. Keep going up to the top, or oh. Don't we want to be down to seven? 
Oh, you're muted. Yes, I, I just couldn't see the there number. There we go, seven right there. Okay. Comprise six members who will initially be elected on an at-large basis by Australian ballot vote of the voters of the unified district. So obviously that's a word. Um, thereafter, the Unified District Board of School Directors should be elected in the manner specified in Article 9 below. Why not tell us right now? The membership of the Unified District Board should be as three directors shall be elected at large from candidates nominated legal voters of Rochester from among the legal residents of that town. Three directors shall be elected at large. Good. All directors should have an equal vote in the board. Okay. Good. And Charity, are you? Yes, I just emailed all three of you and Ray so that he can display it. Right. Um, and it's the, com it's the compiled document with each of the other districts verbiage showing that they clearly state it's Chelsea is Chelsea, Tunbridge is Tunbridge, Great. Hancock is Hancock, Granville is Granville. Yeah, if we have, I mean, this is such a clear argument. Um, and also if we have language, we can just borrow and- Exactly. Just cut and paste, I love it. I mean, yeah, I have, I have absolutely no issue with this. I mean, again, you know that, but if it's, I don't think it's going to be a constitutional issue, because I think, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll get into that when we get to it. Let's see what you've got. I, I haven't gotten it yet, just so you know. Uh, I sent it. <laughs> I know. I'm just. Uh, anybody else got it? Yep. Well, I have seen it before, so. All these were done by the exact same consultant and the exact same lawyers. So I would suggest that we just uh, get those people, well, not do not get Steve Gale involved again, but get the attorney uh, to just uh, jump on to what those three districts wrote in their agreement. And then well, we, well, when, we, when, when we when we meet again, or when you go, you're you're actually going to have a board meeting before. I I think we should. We, I what I think is the proper procedure for us would be that we have some articles tonight that we have the language of. We send those off to the lawyers, and that after Christmas, before the board meeting, we meet again. And just to clarify that we've, you know, what answers we've got so that we know we're putting forward stuff that the lawyers have approved. And then when the board meeting happens, obviously we'd be there and we'd give a report on that. So that's, uh, but I think, I mean, if this is the language that other ones have used, um, Ray, have you, have you received it yet? Email? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, let me let so me I'm, try and I'm a resident of Royalton and within White River Unified both towns vote on both sets of directors. Oh okay. I'm just mentioning that gotcha for no other reason other than um, I know that uh know that well. The version of the document that I have been presenting is the one that's on the website, the SU website. So if that's not accurate, then we should. No, I think, I think we were just in the wrong part of it. That's all. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, two different set, seven sections. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very confusing when you have article something and then you have numbers down below that don't say article. Um, yep. And somebody's reading this. I could see there's all kinds of opportunity for confusion. Um, Sure. Has anyone received it yet? Uh, yeah. Ray, can she share? Can um. An a member or can somebody participating share on their screen like zoom uh she can now okay so, he just uh, gave it just came in oh charity so when you hover at the bottom oh there it is yep towards the right it says uh present now 
if you want to try that while I. I see where it says WRVSU conferences presenting. Oh, yeah, sorry. But I don't see. Okay. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah, I'm looking at it on my computer too. So the I'm going up to the very first one that was what was presented to me. Um, and there are each one, there's pieces in red. Um, mm -hmm. Is that how it is on their, their, their articles or is that yours, your red? Uh, this was a document that was presented to me. I did not prepare this. Oh, just curious. Okay. Board of directors shall be comprised of six individuals elected by Australian ballot by the voters of the municipalities in which they reside. Forming districts representation on the unified border shall be closely proportional to the fraction of its population that its population bears to the aggregate population of all forming school district in the unified district. I think that's what Donna was talking about. The initial unified district school board composition is based upon the Whew, okay. So I'm trying to find where I saw it before because I'm finding where it says that they will be nominated by the legal voters of their town. That's under the Bethel part. That's under the Bethel one? Yeah, three directors shall be elected from candidates nominated by the legal voters of Royalton among Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so so I guess I, I have to take back something I said earlier that everyone is doing it the same way except us, because that's not true based on this. Um, but, I, you know, I guess my... Their languages are different than our languages. Yes, they and, are. And, and I, and, I would. Oh, hold on a sec. Uh, <laughs> Charity, let, let Tim finish here. Yeah. And uh, we do need to remember that Rochester and Stockbridge might be different amount of voters. Yeah. But as far as students, we're within a handful of each other. We each have just about 100 K through 12 students. So even well, this... though, so this article shows us what Hancock Granville does, even though they're only split by like 4%. Mm. And, but Royalton and Bethel, those two towns are certainly different size. And so if we can, if we can decide between our two districts, we don't need to follow their wording exactly, but we get the point, Ethan, you got the point right off the bat that yeah. this is a no brainer and uh, you know, it's going to have to be run by an attorney anyway. Oh, yeah. So, well, uh, you know. I mean, what, I mean, I personally, this first one's a bit verbose for me. It's a bit too much. Um, each forming district shall have at least one representative on the board. I don't know. It just feels like it's, there's too much there. Um, but maybe that's needed. I don't know. Um, the second one seems to be more what we're looking for and seems to be quite similar to the third, to Chelsea Tunbridge. Is that other people, are you agreeing with that? I, I can't, sorry, I was looking at the document, so I can't hear your nods. Um, um, yeah. Yes, I agree with that. Is, is, is that, so are we saying that we would like to propose and put to our lawyers the wording of the Bethel Royalton can we go up to the Bethel Royalton one? Because I think we need yep. to be very clear. Shall be elected from candidates nominated. So no, I don't well, agree with say, that. Like, because I think, I, yeah. I think we need to have clear language that says nominated and elected 
by you know Bethel will or, or Stockbridge will both nominate and elect from its town. St Rochester will nominate and elect from within its town. And you know, I don't know the legal basis of this. Like, well, do we actually have to have this happen during the school board or the school portion of town meeting? Can this be remanded to the town level so that there is no confusion? I don't know the legality of that, okay. but maybe that's how we add it in so that it's very clear that Rochester nominates and elects its representation. Stockbridge nominates and elects its representation. Well, here's the thing. Um, I just suddenly, that, that hit me on the head that we may be, yeah, we may be doing nothing normally on the school board or the, on the town meeting day because it's town uh, issues. Um, but because it's all gonna be Australian ballot, um, it's possible that we could put a ballot issue, but we need to know whether we can put a ballot item on there um, if, if that's okay, if that's legal, or whether we do need to wait till May when it's the school, you know, the R said school meeting. Um, so that's, yeah, but I think, so we're interested in nominates and elects. Um, I mean, is this enough to send this off to our lawyers and have them come up with a proposal for us? So we don't have to spend the time coming up with the wording ourselves. Well, it'll actually be a proposal. To, oh, hold on, Justine. Uh, Tim, go ahead, and then Justine. It'll actually be a proposal that will be given to the RSUD. Then you guys can decide that. You know, yeah. as a committee, we can beat it to death. But if you if you get the wording that we just talked about to the the lawyers. You guys can discuss it at your next meeting, and that will be the one that we can start with to move this whole business forward without a yeah. whole bunch of conflict. So it's nominate. The key is to nominate and elect, because I get worried by this word um, at large. Elected on an at large basis. That sounds to me, I don't know what that term means, but it sounds like it means everybody votes yeah we don't want the at large we want the yeah. separate town exactly. voting no. on we want nominated own. elected and no at large and then that will be equal representation from the board mm -hmm. well, right now it is not equal representation from the board because rochester has half as many more votes oh. i think when you present it to the lawyers i think we also need to find out now that we've decided we want to modify basically seven and 11, we will also need to ask them for verbiage to accurately stop seven and 11 from acting the way they do in the articles at present. Justine might be able to answer that better because she knows legal stuff, not me. We also need to look at, we need to look at 11. We have and nine also is in, in intertwined in that relationship. I think they all are together so yeah i think they will have to be reviewed and i think that was one of our items anyway it's confusing to have them all in separate things so um you know it's a question for the lawyer so let's should we are we ready to take a look at 11 here following establishment of new district budget squares public questions and election of subsequent school directors shall be conducted at the meeting voters acting from the floor unless the voters adopt Annual school district meetings held in locations. Ethan, uh, that's not the right one. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So I, again, you're looking down at the again to the bottom. Yeah. Again, back where those. It was page just twenty-five. Numbers. Twenty-five, please. So that's only a three-page document. Um, we need to go back to the. Yes. Articles of right. agreement. Back to the yeah. other one. Here. And yes. You want page twenty-five. Yes. This one here. Yep. Provisions of the report and formal plan approved by the state board of. Oh, that's not eleven. That's something. 
So what are we talking about when we're talking about a level? Article three, actually, sorry. Yep, okay. it's article three. Up to What's three. Doing? I don't really understand. Oh yeah, article Roman numeral three. Roman numeral three. Yes. And if I just erupt it, I you elect the following officers. I think wording has to, you know. Wait, where, where, where are we? I don't think we're in the right place here. Just article here. Roman numeral oh, three. Okay, they so, say good. After eleven. Yep, and I think it. it uh, I think it just needs to be flushed out a little better because it doesn't include. It should be with seven and be described appropriately with equal. So we're looking for them to combine. Yes. And we're going to have to be very clear. Gosh, we have Roman numerals here too. No wonder this is this is a ridiculous document. We have articles and one number, and then the actual articles are the single numbers without article. Again, it's because the presented articles are were revamped, but not accurately. Okay, so. Who the heck, I mean, you know, I guess we are, but I mean, how do we, seems like these need to be combined or edited or, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of confused right now as to why all of this has to be in there. Like, why is there still have to be as part of the articles of agreement, a history of Stockbridge and history of Rochester? It seems like we have the voted elements and that be alone is what we're looking at. Well, that wasn't what was warned and voted on, all of that history stuff. Okay. Really 20, 23 through 26 was what the public okay. saw. But that's, but if all of this is on the webpage, it's highly confusing. Yes. It's highly confusing. It, it confused me saying, back then. And I'm wondering if we, maybe this is even just a web page kind of thing where we can just put some headers on this stuff. So that it's like actual warned yeah. and voted on articles follow as opposed to preliminary introductory information. I mean, it seems to me that would just that would clear up a lot right there, just so people know charity. If that's I would suggest that we do do that, but I would also suggest that you put the copy. So I obtained a copy that actually shows the stamp where it was received by the town clerk, like you would a formal document. That is the document that should be on the website because it is the official document. So These it's just, people, just the warning. Just yes, and, yep, and it should be labeled appropriately so that if a person is going and looking for it, yep. um, you know, that's like what's there. Like you always have that in the, in the town report, in the school report, you always have the previous warning and it's just the warning. Great, I think that's very clear. Um, I would suggest too make sure it's a, a PDF because these Google Docs are confusing because I, I, it looks like a draft. There was times also when I went in and it and it it it, it, it had I just sign in to see it and we want this to be absolutely accessible to everybody. Okay, so warning. So that's an warning. act. That's actually an issue that I had emailed you about. So. There are times when people cannot get access to certain things on the web because if you don't have a Google account, you can't yep. see it. Yep. And like I, for one, have over the years having kids in the Rutland High School school system, um, because of their classes, I actually had Google security issues. And it's different now that Google is a you know household item. I mean, I haven't had a kid in high school in four and a half years, but there was a time when I couldn't open Gmail because the school had implemented security on my computer to allow my kid to do school. So there are still fragments of that left in Google. So not everyone is able to go to the, the SU website and get these documents. That should, that's, 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 that should yeah, be great. Right. If you could point me to an example, I'd be happy to address it. Uh, I think I sent one when it comes to the videos not too long ago, and Jenny helped me out through you. Um, I could not get it off the school's website or get the link, and none of the links would work. I had to go to Orca's actual website. Okay. And that was even with me signing in to my Gmail account. I could not gain access to it through the SU site. 
but I think she may have already brought that to your attention about a month ago. Well, I'd have to look back. Um, but this, and I'll, I'll, I'll follow up by email. Um, so just a question for Ray, because I know, Ray, you clear, cleared up some things for me on the web page, like the Rochester one still had the old board on it called Rochester board. And I noticed that that's changed. So I really appreciate that, that it's now our sudden lick to the current board, which is excellent. Is this something, if we get you, this doesn't sound like we have to even vote on it. We just, um, well, I don't know. Maybe we, everything has to go through the board. But I mean, in terms of putting correct information, can we just put this warning up there? The yeah, board? as far as I know, I mean, this this part of this predates me in this role, Ethan. So yeah, yeah I, um, I don't know why it is the way it is. But it's probably because uh, it just got jumped there and nobody's looked at it since until tonight. Right. Uh, you know, nobody's really thought about it. So I think that's exactly what we're trying to get at tonight. Yep. I think um, who's going to have are the who's going to have that warning? Um, the, just the warning. The town clerk. Town clerks. I, yeah, and it's yeah. I think it would be helpful if if the warning and even um, this dra uh, the one before the articles prior to this warning were in PDF format. Um, too, because I think it, I, I w had a trouble, trouble figuring out what I was supposed to be reading because I felt like it was. Well, I think document. I only want to put, I mean, I think we just, as I have to say, with, and as I put a big thing here, proper labeling. Right. To make sure they're properly labeled what they are um, and probably excise the history part because we don't need that. We don't need the, the previous history. I mean, I, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's very useful. For anybody coming and looking charity i don't think you want to get rid of that i think proper labeling of the document okay. on the su website is better because okay. that history part you're talking about that is what was physically presented to the boe as our bo as and, our merger presentation and that's so i think there's labeled. yeah, yeah labeled. it's labeling it's a labeling issue got you okay so proper labeling is really so in that sense we do have the warning there we just need to break it up. It's it's almost is it three sections? Sounds like it's we're talking three sections: the the sort of history present or pre, a presentation to the BOE, and then the actual warning that was voted on. And I'm not sure what that middle section, the article, that's part of the BOE presentation. Okay, so all right, let's um, um, if somebody wants to come up with a label. Send it to Ray. We could get this done tonight. <laughs> um, I can try to get a copy of the of the actual warned article from the town clerk. That would be a separate. Already said it'd be nice if it had the stamp on it. That would. Yeah. That, 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 that's that's a nice touch, I think. Okay, good. So, um, um, and then could Justine? Do you think you'd be up for the titling, or do you think you need more information that you could, once you have that proper warning? You know, titling no. the sections, the proper labeling. Sorry, we were saying proper labeling of the sections that are on. I the mean, way. sure, I could, I could pr uh, present an email to you and maybe uh, to the group or something. The yeah. Committee, and then, yeah. And then we'll, and then we'll I, put. Okay, yeah, here. I thought I can even get that tomorrow. That. I'm um, sorry, uh, we've we've sort of jumped off the subject a little bit here. Um, uh, where we were was that we were going to pass something on to lawyers. I I suggest we pass this well i don't know do we want to pass the entire document that charity shared with us of the different school presentations or do we want to give them instructions to come up with language for us to be able to nominate and elect from individual towns um, our own representatives not at large and then also how do we um, stop the initial article but leave it there. Does that sound what we're what we're going for? I think you or, simply send them that instruction to deal with these these ones that are intertwined, because our articles were written differently than other districts' articles. We mm -hmm. simply tell them that this is our intention. How do we rewrite this? This is the point, and this is the core of the the new article. And how do we turn right. off? seven, nine, and 11. Great, and turn off is a great term, thank you. 
Um, or, and I think we should also ask them, are there any pieces of those puddles, puzzles that our new language doesn't handle for things that are written in it? Because we just, because I'm not a legal person and I don't want to. This is, well, this is why I think, as I said, in terms of our timeline, we want to come up with our instructions, send it to the lawyer and then meet again. So we look at it again before we go before the, the RSUD board just so we can, we can you know, get their explanation and we understand it before we go, okay? Good, I will, I will handle that. And I may send you, well, I'll probably be a conversation because this is a little complicated. Um, okay, and this is the web, I take terrible notes. So, oh, I realized we never did a secretary, yikes. Oops, it's gonna be the video, um, that was a, oversight because we need minutes because they're going to want minutes. It's actually illegal. Um, how do we do with this? I don't feel like I'm we taking notes, but I did stop. I did think about the secretary part and then I forgot about it when I got involved. So, I mean, I could do my best or, or maybe use, could I use your notes too and then put together a, the minutes? Uh, yeah, why don't, well, I pro probably what we should do is talk, talk through, talk it through, um, together okay. at some point. Um, I think we yeah. can talk about how it happened. Um, it's not, I think I, I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a pretty big oversight on my part. I should have totally had that. Um, Charity. If I can make a suggestion on how we handle it in the board that I'm a member of. So within three days, we send out a draft uh, note, a draft minutes to all the members. They agree on any submit within 24 hours, their changes, and those are compiled into it. And then your final draft, your final minutes are created. Okay. I mean, we could do that between the four of us pretty quickly and probably not need three days to do it. Great. And I, I think as long as it gets our main talking points, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I think we've been fairly clear here, but that I apologize for that oversight on my part. Okay, so I think we've taken care of 7 and 11, and we've taken care of this issue of clarity on the website of proper labeling. Um, what... What else do we want to deal with tonight? Um, uh, well, we're going to go through and basically see what do we need for clarification and what do we think is a potential amendment. So why don't we do that, go through our list. Um, Justine, you're muted. I just want to say it's not 7 and 11 anymore. It's 7 and Article 3. It's 7, 9 and Article 3 as a group. 7, 9... And Article three, Article they're all related to the election, of and they all should be combined. That's part of combining those. Oh yeah, here it is. I've got it. Combining those is part of our instructions. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. So um, this four A rearrange. Are, are we okay to move on? Do we feel like we've got some? Uh, uh, Tim, yeah. Uh, I was waiting in a room for a while to, if, with something to say. I think we ought to open it back up to the public and see what they have to say. Oh, oh okay. Here. I'm up for that. Me too. Yep. Good. Thank you. All right. Let's go back. Uh, Joanne. Hi there. I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, and keep going. I, I, the thing is, I do would like to remind you that the merger, the um, town meeting in Stockbridge is in March, and that's when the town of Stockbridge is going to vote to remain um, in the merger or not. So I don't know if that has anything to do with your decision to vote in March or vote in May. Just, yeah. just an FYI, I think. The people in Stockbridge want to see some changes and they want to see them fast or they might vote a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's all. And no, I, it, it reminds me of the question that we wrote. And I didn't write it down. We want to find out if we could um, piggyback uh, an Australian ballot item on that election, if that's legal. Right. Right. I, yeah, I, I would assume so. 
Um, Who knows? I'll find. I'll find out. That'll be part of my talk. Okay. On town meeting. Thank you for All reminding right. me. Good job, of that. you guys. Ethan. Um, sorry, who's this? Charity. Can we just remind everyone that if they're not speaking to mute, because someone's got some serious feedback coming through. Yeah, I, I'm seeing four four three fifteen is live. Eight oh two nineteen, you're live on the mic. If you could mute your mic, unverified caller. I, I assume that's Orca. Uh, yeah, night. Oh yeah, good. That took care of it. Thank you. Uh, but 19, you are live on your mic, star six to mute until we get to you, please. Okay, thank you again, Joanne, for that reminder. Um, okay, let's go to Karen. Ethan, Karen. I'm, I'm fine. You guys are doing a great job. So I'm gonna let you keep on working because there's quite a few of the articles that you touched on tonight. It'd be nice to see as many done as possible. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, 443, Ending in one five, star six to unmute. Please identify. I should remember these numbers, but I don't. Ethan, this is Rob Gardner. Can you hear me? Rob again. Yep. Yep. Ethan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a note. Can you hear me? Oh uh, yeah. I'm afraid to get the feedback. You hear me now? Uh yes, I can. Uh yes, I can. So look, I I want to tell you quickly because I was there for the study committee and I was there for that meeting that you had a video on. You guys are making all the same mistakes that were made then. You're in a terrible rush. You can't believe how confusing this is to listen to. Try to understand what you guys are doing. You're rushing through something that's very complicated. You're not um, doing it in a, in a forum that people can really understand what you're talking about. So, you know, you can keep doing it, but I, I think you're, you're building mistakes into what you're doing. I, I would see you don't make the same mistakes that we made that if you were where you are now. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 516, last two digits, 61. Hey, Ethan, it's Keith again. Okay, thank you, Keith. Um, I just really was looking for a clarification on something that both um, Charity and I believe Tim raised. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that has to do with the articles as they were presented to the BOE and what the BOE uh, ultimately uh, sanctioned or approved uh, versus what made it down to the public to vote on. It sounds as though there was quite a number of differences, or did I misunderstand something? No, I think I, I, I think you're right. I think we're um, I'm putting you together with what I heard from Rob and um, slowing down. And I think there is some clarity that needs to be um, had in terms of, you know, what 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 exactly are we following? I think that's sort of the tenor. If there's a theme to this meeting tonight, it's um, there is confusion as to exactly what what exactly we're following as we're going forward as a school district. Um, and it- Okay, so, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so I just, I think it needs to be clarified. And what I've heard so okay, far- Okay, but- Is that- I, I guess the point I'm trying to, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. No, 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 you go, go. Um, I was just trying to, you know, for myself, understand that um, the articles of merger that the BOE approved are not the articles of merger that we are following. And if that's correct, that's a major concern. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just making a note. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Yep. And then I'm at, uh, sorry, but I think I'm, yeah, 774, last two digits, 59. Yeah. yeah, this is Irene Sinta. I'm just trying to follow along. And that last conversation made me think, what is the legal document? What we voted on as voters or what you presented to the, State Board of Education, uh, or are they both legal? 
<laughs> I think this is a I think this is a very good question. Um, uh, uh, I, so far, what we've heard, but I don't think it's this. We haven't asked it specifically enough. So far, we've heard that what we voted on, that's the real deal. Um, that's but, the real deal. That well, I, but that's just that was just in terms of when we're looking at the articles of agreement. So I I think. Clearly, this is an issue that has some confusion around it, and it needs to be clarified. Right. That would be a question for the lawyers. Then. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They need to tell us what is the legal, what are we, what is the there's legal no, there's agreement? There's no point in us changing a lot of things if we're not changing the document that matters. Absolutely. Hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Okay. Irene, are you from Stockbridge? Yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good, and then we're 80219. Please identify yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, this is Greg Piccarello from Stockbridge. Uh, no comment right now. I'm just listening and just following along. Thank okay, you. Great. Thank you. Uh, 80269. Eight oh two six nine. Do you have a comment? Star six to unmute. All right, we'll move on. Eight oh two seven one. Any comments? Star six to unmute. Eight oh two seven one. All right. Thank you all. Let's go back to our meeting. So, um, I, I, I do want to mention- Ethan, this is Joanne. I just want to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I do have the ballot. I didn't know if you wanted to see it that had the original 11, um, 11 articles. I'm sorry to interrupt. I really apologize for that. No, no, no. Um, okay. No, I think it's, uh, I mean, we're going to get it. Where, as we're saying, we'd sort of like to get it from a town officer Absolutely. With, a, with a stamp on it. So I think yep. if we if we put that up, and, and as we say, we think we have it on there. Um, you can actually find it on the uh, school board meetings uh, minutes on this uh, the SUV or the um, supervisory union under November 27, 2017. I believe it's on there. I just I just found it in a pile of my papers that show that's the date. Okay. Okay. Great. Justine, you got that? Good. Okay. Um, I I, I want to hear Rob's comment. <laughs> you know, I just of sort of get you get your well get you know you know I I I, I hear it. You know that the things were rushed. I mean, we said that. <laughs> We said that about this merger that it was rushed. And and how do we feel? Um, obviously, you know, I, I hear the point that things need to happen. Um, I just want to get feedback. I just want to hear what other everyone in this committee has to say about that. Um, uh, Justine, why don't we start with you? Um, in speaking to Rob's comment and Eileen's comment about which document, I think it's really easy as a listener to be confused. I came into the meeting thinking we were hashing out the, the document everyone voted on. So I definitely could use more time to chew on the presentation and um, what, you know, what was presented versus if that's what we're bringing to the table, I think we have to make a decision on what what's the first step and what are the subsequent steps and be very clear mm -hmm. to the public um, so they can give their feedback mm -hmm. because the biggest issue in my opinion is that the public is not as informed as they could be as voters. I, I'm not as informed as I should be. I'm the chairman of the board. Um, I should be able to tell, I should know the answers to this. Um, yeah. I do. I do the, think the, that starting with oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I do think that starting with the representation um, in the document we voted on is a good starting point, mm -hmm. and I would support to to move forward with that no matter what, but also give some more time for the other stuff. Okay, uh, Charity. So 
Sorry, got to hit that unmute button. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm, I have mixed feelings. Um, you know, as far as Rob's question and again, Irene's, when it comes to what article, I think there was language that clearly, that clears that up in the email string from Donna Russo Savage that the only binding document is the voted yep. on articles. Yes. So that, that's the legal end of it. Does that clarify that there are other issues for us to discuss? Absolutely not. Like that, those are two different pieces of a separate puzzle that we need to, as this committee in conjunction with the board, need to figure out how do we rectify all these problems. And so you had come up with the idea of tackle the ones that are going to need to be effective and modified prior to meet town meeting. Now we do have the question of, is it town meeting or is it the school board meeting or mm -hmm. the school meeting? So I, I think we need to, for this, it, it, especially because Rob's point is valid. We don't want to rush and screw up again. Yep. As much as I want change, and I really do think that you need some pretty substantial change to appease some of the more confused and disheartened people by all of this situation, mm -hmm. I don't want to make huge change that's only going to make a bigger pit of mud. Yep. Um, so let's let's figure out which ones of the hotspots did we mention that we know are going to have an impact on, let's call it, the first available appropriate meeting. <laughs> um, you know, what ones do we need to tackle to get to that meeting? And those we have to get through. Um, yes, the voting issue is one of them. Um, and then figure out which ones do we put to the next meeting? Um, and I think we need to figure out which meeting that is yep. because that's going to, that's going to set our timeline. If we find out that we don't get to do anything until May, then that changes a little bit of what we can do. Um, I would, I would, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that because I have, I, like I said, I have mixed feelings on a few pieces. Yep. Good. Uh, Tim? Um, I'm not so sure that what we're talking about is not important. And I'm not so sure that doing the merge process in 2017 wasn't important for either school. So uh, for either town really in the education of our kids. So right now we have a, fair, a new board, new administration, the people that were at the BOE presentation, I think there's only two people uh, that are on the board now. So there's a whole new cast of characters. And you not knowing the, the answers is not surprising because these were talked about at the beginning before you were on the board. So for you, I don't think you ought to take responsibility for that. But from here forward, we all need to take responsibility because it's not Stockbridge necessarily the one that the BOE is looking at. It's Rochester and it has been for years. Mm -hmm. Ever since Act 60 was falling apart, Rochester has been the one that the BOE has been interested in. Mm -hmm. Pushing forward with Act 46 was partly because of Rochester having 35 kids in the high school and that was creeping up toward $30,000 for those kids. Yeah. So uh, if we're going to make this work, and beat the system from the state, we need to get it together. And it clearly was presented to the BOE that, they, that we were going to start within uh, passing them passing our proposal. And within six months, we would be moving forward. My question is, are we moving forward in those six months or have we come either to a complete standstill or going backwards. So we've got an edu we've got an experienced principal with Bonnie, who was, uh, her education was elementary education. And we've got Lindy, who I don't know personally, but everybody in Stockbridge seems to like her. Yeah. So let, my 
rewriting an article at a time is fine. And I'm not sure that we need to go forward with the town. And I don't blame Stockbridge for going forward with presenting to the, their select board to put it on their, uh, their municipal town agenda. That would give RSUD some time to decide things on their own. And, you know, we, I've been in the Valley for 50 years. So I've seen a historical migration, whether it was from graduation or consolidation. We can do this if we do what was proposed to the BOE in the, in the proposal. And we need to work toward that and make our articles of agreement align with what was presented to the BOE and follow through with it. And that is not what we've been doing. So, you know, if we want to completely come to a standstill and rewrite the whole new articles of agreement, that's fine. But I think if we take one at a time and fix the ones that we know are glaring out at us, we ought to do that. But it's going to be the RSUD board that votes on it. You know, we're just an advisory. I mean, we're soaking up the information from our neighbors and bringing it to, to RSUD. So, you know, we can't make policy. No. But we can certainly listen to our neighbors. Well, here's, here's what I'm going to suggest. Not only that it's almost 830, <clears throat> I wonder if this isn't a good first meeting where we've gotten to so far. I mean, I know we've got a lot more to talk about, but we've got the list now. We've prioritized one particular article. We've got some serious, some simple clarification fixes in terms of information that's out there that we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out information about whether we can deal with this first town meeting, we can piggyback on Australian ballot. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good moving forward time. Um, uh, you know, and to come back once we have some language from the lawyers and have our next meeting and then start and also work on Cause of course we, you know, I mean, if you wanted to make this a three hour meeting, I'm, I'm, I'm used to three hour meetings. That's pretty much what we do all the time. Um, but I'm just, I'm just feeling like, um, uh, we've done good work tonight and we've got a lot out to put out there that then we would get back if we scheduled another meeting right now and came back for it. How do we feel about that? And I, you know, I'm not dropping the ball at all. I'm just saying we've done some really good work so far. What do we think? I think it would be helpful to, to end the meeting, like you say, and I have a little more time to compare the proposal to the BOE and also have the folks who are listening have the option to um, chew on it a little bit, and then we can move forward with our next hot items and maybe uh, an actual game plan at, the at our next meeting. I, I want to add to our list of what we've done. We also have a very clear question of what is the legal basis for this merger? Is it what we voted on or is it all the what was presented? And I think we need a big answer to that. Yes. Because that, that helps our work. Because then we know, okay, you know, if they say forget about the presentation of the BOE, you know, forget about that. That is not the basis of your merger. Your basis of merger is what you voted on. Well, that changes how we proceed, you know, whether and whether we talk about these other issues. That it's, it makes our work easier if we know the answer to that question. Charity, what do you think? Um, what, what's your idea of the next, when we would have a next meeting? I just uh, don't want to see this drag no, no, on and January no, 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 15th no, no, no. quick. No, 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 believe me. Um, uh, I'm looking at, I mean, I'm assuming we don't want to do it Christmas week. I'm looking at the 29th. That would still give us a, uh, a week. We'd have a week before the RSUD meeting on the fifth but does that give us time if we figure out what our hot spots are get language to the lawyers and present that at the rsud meeting 
I don't know that a week is enough time. That's my concern. And if we've got a January 15th deadline, we're pushing that really hard to have this become an ineffective adventure. No, um, I'm just thinking about what, what more do we think we can achieve tonight? We've got, we've got language that we want to put out to the lawyers. We need to know this thing about whether we, whether this is the January 15th is the deadline we're looking at, because we need to know whether we can piggyback on Australian ballot for a town meeting. And then we have several issues of clarity in terms of what information is put out there um, on the website. And then we have this very clear understanding of which, what is what we are working on. Is it, the, is it what we voted on or is it the BOE presentation? I'd say those are a lot of questions to go forth. Um, I, I mean, uh, if you want to meet next Tuesday night, if we think we can have an answer by then, I, I'll do it. Um, that's up. That's a, you know, it's two days before Christmas. Um, that's just the timing of where we are. But if, if, if you think we should get to it that quick, I'm certainly ready for that. How do we feel? So it's really about scheduling our next meeting, 22nd or 29th. I but guess I feel like we at least tonight should figure out and add to the list of what other, what are the other hotspot articles that we know we want to address in the next, you know, the next available mm -hmm. town meeting votes, whatever one it's going to be. Well, I've um, got, if I've it's the one that we have to warn for on January 15th, then, you know, I, I guess my concern is that we have some of, some of the hotspot ones that we mentioned are ones that could potentially impact how budgeting is done, how, um, how expenses and income are recorded. Like there are, there are pieces of the puzzle in the ones that I know I highlighted as ones I want us to look at and address that I don't want it to go unnoticed or unaddressed mm -hmm. when I know that we're in a budgeting process right now and they're ones that affect that. Uh, particularly um, specific endowments? No, um, those aren't actually ones I'm most worried about because those, whatever was set in place is happening. But like, you know, one of the ones, and I, I apologize because I'm looking at the art, the document that we said not to use. But, you know, one of my ideas is the original articles mentioned that only for year one do we do the expenses and everything for Rochester, Stockbridge, and then combined. But in any proper business that has more than one entity in it to make up a larger entity, mm -hmm. you would be foolish to not have a mechanism to properly allocate and recognize income and expense. Gotcha. And that I know is an issue for the public, you know, especially Stockbridge, because it, it's been an issue um, and it's one that has been mentioned numerous times, but it's also going back to my issue that I have harped on. I sorry, but I have harped on the issue of transparency and accountability every chance I've gotten. And this speaks directly to that. And in that article, that is one that you wouldn't want to wait and address it in May. No. Because they're going to need to figure out how to, how are, the, how is Tara at the business office going to properly make that happen? We're, um, we're supposed to vote on the budget. Um, on, ASAP. <laughs> in January. Of course, that we also asked for significant changes to come back, back to a 2% uh, growth budget and also the deficit, the new deficit numbers have to be taken in. Um, what's the article? Do you oh, so this is not from our the articles that were voted on? This is or is that is there? Well, I I wrote on the wrong one. I didn't write on this one. So give me a second and because uh, I, I I think I mean that to me seems like another pretty easy pretty easy one for me to get my mind around along with um, you know that that's that's a pretty clear change 
Um, and it also, that also may not be the kind of thing that needs a town vote. Um, it may be something that the RSUD board could decide. You know, and this was Donna Savage did say, there may be some issues that we can, that the board can actually take care of without voting on it. You know, that yeah, that I guess, I guess my concern is that it was originally written as a year one only thing in the articles. And if we want that to become a standard, why would we not address that in the articles again? Let me ask you um, questions. And I'm trying to find where the wording is. And I apologize because, you know, like I said, I wrote on the other document, not the ratified document. Can, can our set change it? Um, And, and again, I I have to reiterate something that Justine said. The two different the two documents are written differently. The ratified articles are different than the proposed article in the BOE. So I wrote on the one that was, of course, the proposed draft version. And now I'm having a hard time myself finding it. So I definitely understand why we want more time. I just don't want to see that time go too far out. No. I mean, I want us to be prepared for January 15th if that is our is going to be our deadline yep. well then let's i mean uh, as i said i'm i'm game i'm game for a meeting next week if we think we're going to have um 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 uh, hold on joanne i see your hand raised uh let me just because i think this is a this will clarify for us is it is everybody else willing to meet next tuesday yeah i it might be unlikely that i would be back in time i uh, my schedule uh, I'll be up in the Northeast Kingdom all day. Mm -hmm. So I could come late maybe, or I may not be back in time for most of it. That's my only concern. Otherwise I would, would be willing to. Charity, would you be willing to? Yeah, I'm game. Okay, Tim. Oh, you're muted, Tim. Oh, you're still muted, Tim. There. there. Hey, I, I'm going to be on the road that Tuesday night. Okay. I might be able to do it from the car. I think it's pretty important that we keep going forward. And what about I am curious to find out uh, what you find out this week. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and who so knows, you know, who knows how much I'm going to get. I'm going to, you know, be, I'm going to get on it right first thing tomorrow morning. Um, uh, what about Monday night? That would be better for me, but. Good for charity, good for Tim. I can make it work, pretty sure. I think Monday's better for me. Okay. Yeah. Then let's, I say let's do it. Um, you know, um, we, we, wanna, we wanna do it thoroughly, but we also wanna keep up, we want both. We wanna do it thoroughly, but we wanna keep up the tempo. Uh, keep up the movement. All right, then I would say if we do move for uh, a meeting on the 21st at 6.30, um, do we think we have accomplished enough in this first meeting tonight? And I'm glad you brought up that separation of budget because um, I'm gonna ask if that's something, that's a major question. That may be something that the RSUD can take care of, which of course would be you know, ideal if we can do some of these things. Um, um, if we can do some of these things without necessarily, you know, that help things help help transparency, without necessarily going to the voters about all of it. Good. So yes, yes, we have uh, finished our job tonight, or no, we have not. Yes. Uh, I w I wonder if we can just go through the hot spots that we've outlined just in order quickly. And, okay, and, I'll, I'll repeat. Well, this is the same page. these are I, I would call these instead of hotspots, I would call these action items. And, and I don't know if we should respond to Joanne first or oh, yeah, sorry, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yes, I'm Joanne, so sorry. Please. I just wanted to tell you I didn't have um Justine's email address, but I did send 
a copy of that um the what we voted on and it actually even had the nu who the number of votes that each of the board members got and it's it's a pretty thorough um document i sent one to ethan and tim and charity but i didn't have justine's email i'm sorry so if someone okay. wants to forward it, I'll just, forward it on wanted to, to work with it tonight thank you okay thank you joanne um Let me just do that real quick. Okay. I'm going to call these action items and my notes are not totally organized. So it's going to change the order of how I do them. Um, number one, separation of budgets. Um, it's in the articles, can or said, change that or does it need to be a warned article? Question two, can we piggyback on articles on the town meeting in March, the Australian ballot town meeting? Um, question three, and these are our instructions to the, our lawyers that we want to change our, um, our selecting of school board members to nomination and election within each specific town and not to be voted on at large. Uh, basically combining seven, nine and Roman numeral three and how to stop seven, nine and Roman numeral three. That we need clarity on the web page as far as the merger documents and that they need to be properly labeled. And then finally, we need a definitive answer. Um, which is the legal document that this merger is following? Is it the document we voted on or is it have any relationship to what was presented to the BOE? And that's what I have as our action items. Does that sound complete? Thumbs up. Thumbs up, Charity. Uh, I think we also need to continue going through the hotspot articles. Do you want to do that tonight? Uh, no, not tonight. Okay. I, I yeah. think we no, decided. Is... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got. I mean, that's another thing we accomplished tonight is we have a list of our hotspot items, and we know that we're going to go back. It'll be on our agenda next time to review hotspot items and prioritize or remember we talked about question or action. Each one has either, it's either a clarification question or an action that we want taken. Good. And it's my understanding that our work will be based on our response from the attorneys as to which document the BOE is expecting of us, right? The B, wait, I didn't understand that, Justine. Well, what Tim was describing is the Board of Education is, uh, you know, we, we presented something. That, that's the question to the attorney. What, what document yes. you are we really focusing on? Know. Yeah, which legal document is the basis for this merger? And, do, and, and literally, I want to ask, do we need to pay any attention to that video? Right. Me too. Yes or no? Yes, then we have a lot of work to do, and there's yeah. a lot of communication. Um, oh no, okay, that's, yeah, that's in my list. Good. Uh, Tim, you feel good with that, that we can move on to our meeting next week? Yes, I do. Good. Charity, do you feel good that we can move on? Yes, as long as I learn how to hit the mute button the right way. <laughs> good. And Justine, do you feel like we're good to move on? Yes, I do. Okay, great. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. First, aye. Aye. Yeah. thank all our participants for coming. Uh, much appreciated. Really pays. Oh, Tim, you have something to say? Nope. I hit oh, the wrong yeah. button. You just raised your hand. <laughs> okay. Thank you.